work as a staffer at a small summer camp, and during the off-season they have retreats. Staffers aren't treated badly, but we are the lowest of the totem pole and do all the hard work around 7am to 2am. So we are having some long work days. We also don't get paid as much as the counselors, we only get about $100 a week. Our food and board is the rest of the payment, you see, and most of us aren't old enough to worry about rent quite yet. The camp also has this very strict hiring policy because they have a good reputation and value every member of staff. Also, I'm either an insomniac or a narcoleptic, or both if that's possible, and anemic, so I'm constantly tired and trying to nap everywhere. This is important. The story. For several weeks, someone from staff has been stealing money from the rest of the workers. Lots of it. At this time, I didn't have a nickname like everyone else, though they did occasionally call me Smartass because I love random facts and could get pretty snarky for the fun of it. Or Ninja Napper because I sleep wherever and whenever I can and will attack you if you touch me. But I also love to watch Sherlock and write detective stories, so when my bosses were talking about how to solve this problem, I volunteered. The Revenge. So I started by scouting everyone out. My closest friends were out of the question since they roomed with me and I knew where they were at all times. Still, I investigated a bit before ruling them out completely. Then I moved on to the rest of the staffers. There were two I was suspicious of. Brittany and Dayton. Brittany held true to all the stereotypes about a girl with her name. I know a few nice Brittanys, but she's not one of them. How she got on staff, I have no clue. Now Dayton is obnoxious, but a good worker. However, when I joked about being a kleptomaniac, because I love stealing and wearing everyone's clothes, and we were all pretty close at this point, so it was just fun, he went quiet and laughed nervously. I checked out the counters next, but they were clean. Too busy dunking campers in the pool or doing crafts to care about the missing money problems of staffers. Same with the tech team, Rex team, and outdoor team. That's when I knew that my two suspects, Dayton and Brittany, were the only two options. It only took me a day to rule out Dayton. He was off campus when the next step arrived. Brittany had been in the pig pen cleaning dishes near where the crime was committed. She was smart, though. She had a witness testifying she talked to her the entire time, even though no one was really sure when the theft took She had a witness testify that she talked to her the entire time, even though no one was really sure when the theft took place, they believed her alibi. The game. She was relatively clever. It took me two weeks to catch her. First, I had to get her used to some things. Number one, I nap everywhere. It was easy for her to adjust to this since I was famous for it already. I don't sleep in those five hours. We get to rest between finishing cleaning up late night and serving breakfast in the morning, so I sleep everywhere. On roofs, halfway up the rock climbing wall, under the serving counter, on top of the serving counter, you name it, I've slept there. Check number two, and it's impossible to wake me up from noise or light, but touch me even barely and I'll attack. This was also easy because it's true. Once I managed to sleep, I was dead to the world. If someone bangs pots over my head, I stay asleep. If someone flicked the lights on and off in front of my eyes, I still stay asleep. If someone brushed me on accident, I attack. Number three, I leave my money wherever. This was a bit of a sacrifice. I'm pretty laid back and lazy because I'm always tired, so it's not too far of a reach to believe. But in truth, I'm meticulous with my money. I had to leave it and let her steal it for two weeks. This was my paycheck, and she was taking all of it, but sacrifices had to be made if I was going to properly get revenge on Brittany. Number four, I'm an idiot. Everyone knew I was investigating the theft, including Brittany, so I accused several other people and confided privately about my suspicions to her. Don't worry, I told the accused beforehand what was going on, but no one else knew. She was very agreeable when I suggested anyone but her. Finally, the trap. Finally, I set the trap. Over the span of a week, I let her steal about a hundred bucks from me in twenties, each time following her tips and accusing several people. The week before, it was all fives and ones. Then, one day, I took a nap next to a handful of twenties, a reminder that all this money was my paycheck, and waited. I videoed her walking up to me, taking the money, and giving me the bird. The reward? I showed my bosses where she kept the money under her mattress, and the video. I explained my random accusations to everyone who didn't know who all thought I was a bitch by then, and made a ridiculous amount of Sherlock jokes and references along the way because why not? Brittany was fired, and I was given my money back plus a little extra, and my nickname has been Sherlock ever since. 
that's not where this ends. Oh no. Buckle down and let me tell you about Brittany's Rheinbach Fall. Once I went to my bosses with the evidence and they were able to say that she definitely did it, there was a meeting called between her and, well, let's call them Lissandre Minecroft, the Queen and Miss Hudson. That would be the camp director, camp supervisor, and two staff coordinators. Let it be known that I was on a first name basis with the director and supervisor before the summer, and the coordinators were fond of me since I worked hard and cheerfully to make up for my mostly accidental naps. Because I was the witness, the one who provided the evidence, and the consulting detective, I was called into this meeting as well. I laid out the evidence, I showed them the video and the money, and brought in each accused person from the last two weeks so they could confirm that it was an act and I wasn't cluelessly but a lucky idiot. Brittany, in her plastic blue chair, was glaring at me with the popular girl knives for eyes. The time came for her to defend herself. She tried to spin some story about me framing her. When that didn't work, she tried to say that I was her partner waiting for the money herself. First of all, I couldn't resist saying that at this point that she was acting like one of those dumb crooks from a TV show. That also didn't work, and she had a few choice words for me for my comment. Finally, they excused me from the room. After all, I was a big help, but I was just a staffer. I wasn't appropriate for me to be in the room or contribute to their deliberations. I waited outside for a good 20 minutes before the door was slammed open so hard it almost hit my face. And I'll admit I was trying to eavesdrop. Brittany walked out. When she saw me, I fully expected her to leap at me. But she didn't. She cursed me out, said she'd ruined my social media accounts, and called me out on the slutty stuff I did and left. As she left, I called to her that crime never slept, but I certainly did. Joke's on her, I don't have any social media, and I've never even dated. So, while it wasn't as fun or as clever as the actual revenge, it was still satisfying to be a part of that. Last I heard, she tried to reapply this year. The bosses aren't idiots, and they aren't going to rehire a thief. Thanks guys for listening. Really, check out this pro-revenge blog on Tumblr. It has a whole bunch of stories just like this, and it's just so satisfying to read. Check them out. It's really cool. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!